Hey guys, I'm Pixel Dan, and this is a review of the G.I. Joe Retaliation Ghost Hawk 2 vehicle. So it's finally here. G.I. Joe Retaliation is finally hitting theaters, albeit about a year later. But hey, it's out, and all the toys are back in stores, and we're getting some pretty cool stuff amongst all the movie items. And one of the items that we're taking a look at today is the brand new Ghost Hawk 2 vehicle. Now this is the vehicle that's around the $25 price point, so let's go ahead and check this out and see if it's worth the value. Now just like all the vehicles in this price point, it comes in one of the smaller enclosed boxes, which does feature some really nice artwork of the Ghost Hawk right there on the front. Of course it does feature that same kind of yellowy orange explosion look that we've seen on all the retaliation card backs, and it does feature movie images of both Roadblock and Snake Eyes down there in the corner. You'll also notice that there is a blurb on the front that lets you know that this comes with a Duke figure. So the back of the packaging just shows off some actual images of the vehicle within, as well as the Duke figure, and lists off some of the action features. One of the interesting things I want to note about the box is that the Duke figure they've got pictured on the back is wearing a helmet. I thought that was kind of weird when I saw it on the box because don't these movie figures usually like showing off the actor's faces? Anyway, we'll check the figure out when we get to it. So upon opening the box, you will notice that there is some assembly required. There's an included sheet of instructions that will help guide you through the process. It is front and back, but don't let that throw you off. It's very easy to assemble. It snaps together very quickly. You could probably get the whole piece put together in about five minutes. Everything pops right in place. The thing that's going to take you the longest are the stickers. There's an included sheet of decals, and there are quite a few of them. Those same instructions will show you where the decals can go, but I'm going to tell you right now, it's a little bit frustrating to put all these decals on. They're a little flimsy, you need to be careful taking them off the sheet so that you don't rip them, and one of the things that I don't really like is, even though the instructions show you where the decal should go, there's really nothing on the actual vehicle that indicates you're putting them in the right spot, so you kind of have to guess and hope that it's the right place. But one of the other things I will say that is neat about the decals is you do have multiple options for the design that goes on the front. You'll see that you kind of got some different designs and the one that I chose to use is the little eyes and the mouth on the front. Now the reason I think it's cool that it comes with multiple options is if you want to kind of buy multiple Ghost Hawks so that you can have several of them in your fleet, you can design them all differently. And I think that's actually kind of a cool concept. All right, so once you get it all put together, you get the decals on, this is your Ghost Hawk 2. Now right away, I will say that I really like the look of this vehicle. It's definitely got a very G.I. Joe vibe to it. It's molded mostly in this green color that it all is. There is some gray on the bottom, so there's no intricate paint details or anything like that, but it does look good for what it is. And the decals, if you apply them, it does kind of add some detailing here and there that will help stand it out so it's not just a solid green plastic. Plus there is some sculpting in there, so you do have some lines and some panels and everything on there, but overall, I do really like the look of this. It's also big. It's much bigger than I was expecting it to be. Uh, the wingspan on this is about 19 inches, and from head to fin on the plane itself, it's about another 18 inches. So it's actually a pretty good size, and you can see it standing next to the included Duke figure there. That way you can get an idea of how big this is. So I honestly think this is going to be a great display piece. And G.I. Joe collectors will probably really like to add this one to their collection because for the size, it's actually got a pretty good price point. But before you make your decision, I guess we should go ahead and look at all the rest of the details on this thing. So one of the things that I'm going to point out right away because they're so garish that they stand out are those bright orange missiles. Now it is worth noting that this thing is armed to the teeth. I mean, it has got a ton of weapons. Look at all those missiles on there. But there's such that nasty bright orange that they really stand out. I do kind of wish they were at least dulled down a little bit instead of being that fluorescent color because amongst the green and the gray of the rest of the plane, it's just really, really, really bright. Now all the missiles basically just kind of clip onto the bottom of the wings, you got some that clip onto the top, and they don't really have any action features for the ones that clip on there. Basically they're the type that you just kind of give a little push and they drop off, so no, no features that drop them off. However, you do have two firing cannons on the top that have included missiles. There's just little push buttons on there, so when you press that, it launches off your projectile missiles and it actually does have a really nice spring to it, so it shoots them pretty good. Now, word of warning. 
when you're applying these missiles, they just have the little tabs and they just push onto the little uh, pieces that are hanging off the bottom of the wings. One thing I'm going to note is that the wings attach kind of loosely to the actual plane. Not like they're going to fall off when you're moving it around or anything like that, but when you apply pressure, especially when trying to put these bombs on, it is very easy to pop the wings off. In fact, the first time I was trying to attach the bombs, I was holding it like this and I was putting the bombs on and the thing flew off and hit me right in the face. Bet you guys wish I had that on camera, don't you? So uh, just a word of warning, be careful with it. The wings very easily pop off. And uh, that is definitely one of the downsides I kind of feel of this. Uh, the overall plastic that's used on this is that same kind of lightweight, cheaper feeling plastic that we've seen with some of the other recent vehicles like the Hiss tank. Uh, it's not as bad as the Hiss tank. I, always, I felt the Hiss tank was really light really hollow feeling. Uh, this doesn't feel as hollow, but just be warned, it is a little lighter, and I think that's why these pieces don't clip together so well. So it does have some included action features on there. First of all, of course, you do have the opening cockpit, so you can fold that open, and you can set your little pilot figure on the inside there, ready to pilot the Ghost Hawk. And then the other action feature is you guessed it, a zipline feature. This seems to be the running theme with the retaliation figures so far. All of these individual figures are coming with their own little zip lines, and the Ghost Hawk itself has its own kind of little pulley system, <laughs> as you will, uh, that will work with the action feature, action figure inside. So let me show you how that works. First of all, we have this little string hanging off the back. Now, this is kind of a little nitpick of mine, not that big of a deal. Uh, this is the part of the string that you pull that's gonna lower the figure down. Now, you've got the ability to kind of wind the string up on this little knob when you're not using it, and then you can clip the bottom part of it to the rest of the string to kind of keep it tucked away. But as you can see, it's always gonna have a little bit of slack in it, so that string is always gonna hang down. Um, you can probably try to wrap it a little tighter in there, but there's not a lot of room for it, and like I said, I guess that's not too big of a deal, but it does kind of bug me that the string is always hanging down. So we got this bottom door that opens up, and can I just note that I think it's kind of weird that the door opens from the front? Most of the time you see airplanes with the doors that open from the back. That way if it's landed, it can kind of open down and we can put guys in there, but no, nope, this one opens from the front. It's just for the action feature though. I mean, there's not a lot of room in there, so you can't really store a lot of figures or anything, so really not that big a deal, I guess. But as you can see from that, you can pull the string through, and it just has this little backpack. The backpack will attach to your included figure, it's got a little peg on it so it can plug into the hole on his back and just kind of straps in over him. So now we've got our figure hanging from the plane. And then you can use the little pulley string on there, kind of raise him back up into the plane or drop him back down. Raise him up, drop him down, raise him up, drop him, and that's it. That's all it does. It's an okay feature, but I can see that kind of running dull after a while. And that's definitely there more for the kids than it is for us collectors. But not a bad feature. I'm not going to nitpick on that one too bad. The only thing I don't really like about it is the fact that that string's always kind of hanging down. Wish that wasn't the case. All right, so you've seen me playing with the Duke figure a little bit. So let's take a closer look at that. So this is your included Duke figure. And just like the back of the box, he's wearing a helmet, which I thought was weird. So let's try to take that helmet off. What? It's, nope, nope, not a helmet. That's his head. So like, really? This is Duke? What distinguishing features of this tells me that this is Duke? This looks like random airplane pilot. <laughs> I don't know why on the box they're calling this a Duke figure because this is just some guy wearing a helmet. Whatever. Now I will say it's a cool design. He's a neat looking figure. But here's the other downfall. Just like we saw with the Hiss tank, like we've been seeing with the vehicle so far, big cost cutting measures, very, very minimal articulation. He's got a ball jointed head, but then his arms move up and down, his legs move up and down. This dude does not have G.I. Joe style articulation. So that is a huge turn off right there. And I can see a lot of people not caring at all for this actual figure. Now, it is worth noting that since the head just kind of pops off the ball joint there, uh, you can do a little bit of head swapping. Uh, I actually took the head right off the Duke figure from series one and I swapped them there. Uh, it's worth noting that the ball joints are a little smaller on this one, so it doesn't fit perfect, but it's doable. So I guess that way if you want to, you can put the actual Duke head on this body or you can put that really cool looking helmeted head on a better GI Joe body and get yourself a more articulated pilot. So it's worth noting you could at least do that. 
All right, so just to kind of give you guys a better idea of the size and everything of this, let's go ahead and pull the Hiss tank up. This is the Hiss tank from that same series. And you kind of see the two side by side. Uh, good size vehicle, I will say that. I think that's one of the pros of uh, the Ghost Hawk here. It's a nice sized vehicle uh, and it does look like a GI Joe vehicle. Uh, one last action feature I almost forgot to mention. You can actually rotate the wings, which is kind of a cool little feature. So it's kind of got the little landing type thing. You can rotate the engines down uh, for when they have the takeoff to go straight up. And rotate the engines back around, ready to go. So that's kind of a neat little feature there. Rotate them up, you can rotate them down. They, they spin all the way around. So, But there you go, guys. There's a look at the G.I. Joe Retaliation Ghost Hawk 2. Definitely some pros and some cons with this one, but I will say that in the end, I think it is still a really nice looking G.I. Joe vehicle. It's got a very Joe vibe to it. It's got a nice color scheme. The decals are a little bit of a nuisance, but once you get them on, it does help with the overall look of the thing. And like I said, it's a decent price for a vehicle of this size. So I think it will be a cool one to actually display on your shelf or maybe buy multiples of to kind of, you know, arm up your G.I. Joe fleet. Uh, the bright orange missiles, eh, not so much a fan of, and the included action figure, I just, ugh, I hate that they're, I hate that they're doing this. Come on, Hasbro, I know it costs a lot of money to do this kind of stuff now, but G.I. Joe figures are not G.I. Joe figures without articulation. Just saying. So, eh, pilot, not so great. Vehicle itself, not too bad, so it might be one that you want to actually pick up. Uh, the Ghost Talk 2 is hitting store shelves right now, so if it looks like something you want to check out, happy hunting! And until next time.